Hi guys. When I first picked up the Quest 3, I was genuinely excited to try out wireless PC VR. The idea of cutting the cord and racing freely in VR felt like the future. But that excitement quickly hit a wall because as slick as Air Link sounds on paper, it's incredibly sensitive to your environment. In my case, it didn't hold up. So today I want to walk you through how I've dialed in my setup using Virtual Desktop. I'll cover the issues I faced with Airlink, why Virtual Desktop is a better fit for sim racing, and the exact settings I use to get a smooth, high fidelity experience, even in a less than perfect wireless environment. Let's start with the elephant in the room, Airlink. Now I'm no stranger to high-end hardware. I run an RTX 4090, a powerful CPU, and my rig is wired into a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet backbone. My home network is powered by a Wi-Fi 7 mesh system, so on paper, I should be the ideal candidate for Airlink. But here's the catch. My SIM rig isn't in the same room as my router. It's several meters away, behind solid walls and doors, surrounded by electrical interference from monitors, amplifiers, and tactile gear. And here's where Airlink starts to fall apart. I'll get broken frames, audio distortion, and random stutters, especially in fast-paced sims like iRacing or ACC. It was fine for casual gaming, but the moment I moved to the rig, the experience degraded fast. That's when I turned to Virtual Desktop, and honestly, it's been a revelation. Unlike Airlink or Steamlink, Virtual Desktop gives you far more control over your streaming pipeline. You can tweak codecs, bit rates, frame rates, sharpening, and even enable advanced features like Snapdragon Game Super Resolution. It's not just a plug and play solution, it's a tunable platform and lets you optimize for your specific hardware and environment. And that flexibility is exactly what saved wireless VR for me. Let's dive into the actual settings I use. On the PC, I use the codec AV1 10-bit. This gives better compression and visual fidelity. On the runtime side, I use OpenXR set to Steam VR. This is more stable across multiple titles. Audio, stream to VR headset only. This avoids sync issues. Other toggles I use, use virtual audio driver, automatically adjust bitrate, start with Windows, Start minimized in tray, auto select microphone. Now you might ask, why not use VDXR? VDXR does offer better performance in some titles, especially iRacing, but I found it inconsistent in others. It's improving rapidly, so I'd encourage you to test it for yourselves. But for now, Steam VR remains my go-to for stability. On the headset side, inside the headset, Here's what I've dialed in. VR quality, godlike, yes, I've got the horsepower to back it up. Frame rate, 72 FPS. Smooth motion without overtaxing the pipeline, couldn't quite manage 90 FPS. Bitch rate, 200 Mbps. This is high enough for crisp visuals. Sharpening, 74%. This balances clarity without introducing artifacts. SSW is disabled. I prefer native frames over synthetic ones. Advanced options, Snapdragon, game super resolution enabled, video buffering enabled, track controllers enabled, increased color vibrancy enabled. These settings give me a rich, stable experience, even when streaming high fidelity sims wirelessly. This setup is what finally made me retire my HP Reverb G2 a headset I've used and loved for years. Visually, the G2 still has an edge in clarity, but the convenience and flexibility of wireless VR with virtual desktop tipped the scales. I can stream races, jump into desktop mode, and switch between Pancake and VR without the clunky transition. Sector one is a second jumping. off your best. It's not flawless. My router's still a few rooms away, but I only get a stutter or two in a 90 minute race that's more than acceptable. And if I really wanted to push it further, I could experiment with VDXR again or reposition my access point. But for now, this setup works and it works well. 
Let's break down why Virtual Desktop stands out. Virtual Desktop gives you the tools to adapt your setup, whether you're racing, flying, or just browsing. It's the most versatile solution I've found. Virtual Desktop has transformed my Quest 3 from a secondary headset into my daily driver. If you're struggling with AirLink or SteamLink or just want more control over your pipeline, give Virtual Desktop a serious look. It's not just a workaround, it's a proper upgrade. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I'll keep testing, tweaking and sharing everything I learned so you can get most out of your sim rig without the guesswork. Stay safe, race hard, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.